just ask you. Um, okay, so this is just a bit of an extended interview of Dida. Um, so, ha, um, Dida Cornell, is, am I saying it correctly? It's Didier Cornell. It's, Didier uh, Cornell, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So, how did you first get interested in um, aging and regenerative medicine? What, what got you first involved? So, I... It was uh, five years ago. I have the, I would say, w once in a while, I try to think about what are the reasons of my political and social activities. And uh, well, I've always been active, uh, fighting. Well, my first field of interest was uh, fighting against the hunger in the world because I think it's really awful that there are people dying of hunger. And uh, the, the rest of my idea was also uh, that you have to fight against the hunger and disease that easily uh, easy to avoid. And uh, I read then that it was that uh, I was wondering what are precisely uh, diseases who are easy to avoid. And then I was uh, Googling around and I discovered that uh, maybe really, uh, disease related to old age will be uh, possible to avoid. And then I realized that uh, two thirds of the people dying at the, at the moment in the world are dying of old age. So the rest was uh, following. And uh, once uh, that you, I would say one, once that you understand this, that you don't have this uh, uh, once that you realize that old age is something that you that will be maybe someday possible to avoid, you are almost uh, not able not to go <laughs> to the end and to think, uh, okay, let's uh, let's try to make it possible. I think it's worthy go. So um, did you did you see Aubrey de Grey's TED? video. I think that was a pretty defining moment for, for me. It's a pretty convincing character over I think. He's, a, he's got a way with words, that guy, and um, he's also very intelligent. Uh, so did you did you get to see his uh, TED video? I think it was yes, done in sure. 2006. Uh, yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, this uh, TED video uh, of 2006 is a really very good one. Uh, I watch it and uh, with uh, another uh, person active in uh, France, but uh, an English speaking uh, person active in uh, France, uh, we translated the, the, the TET uh, in, uh, in French. So you can, uh, when you watch it, you can choose a few languages and uh, the yeah. French the yeah. version is coming from, from us. But, mm. and, uh, and also the the fable of the dragon time this uh, short story of uh, i think it's something like 10 pages is also for me a very good one to uh, to describe the fact that uh, at the moment we don't realize that uh, old age is a disease that we can um, i don't find the, the word in english that we can uh, overcome sorry uh, and uh, also this uh, this short story, uh, I, I translated it uh, personally in uh, in French, and uh, I paid for the translation in uh, in Dutch. Well done, uh, well done. It's a worthy goal. It's a worthy goal. Are, there, are there many people um, in Brussels or, or France who are who are interested in these topics? Well, no, it's like uh, in uh, every part of the world. I think it's a small number of people who are who understand the, the situation. It's a growing number, but it's not. Uh, it will not be tomorrow that there will be a majority of the people thinking, "Yes, uh, let's uh, live a lot longer." And uh, like uh, you probably know. One of the big questions the people are asking is about uh, overpopulation, and well, I will uh, I will speak about this in uh, in Hong Kong, of, of course. Uh, let's say, uh, well, there are people saying like once again over the grave, but uh, okay, there are other scientists than uh, over the grave, but uh, who say when we will discover some way for mice or for uh, other mammals, but small mammals, to live a lot longer. The, the 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 people in the street they will realize that it's possible, and they will uh, they will ask uh, they they will uh, 
uh, suddenly uh, really be uh, for life extension and uh, and it will be a big change but it's well difficult to say if it's for the day after tomorrow in uh, a few months a few years it's very difficult to say just uh, there is a book uh, in french well there are two books uh, who published this year about life extension in in french one is called la mort de la mort it's the death of the dead and the other one i for, i forgot the 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 title but so even in french speaking people the ideas about life extension are progressing one other problem is the fact that uh, well at the moment there is no way to have uh, to be sure no sorry there is no way to take a product or to take something that is going to make you live really longer and of course there are a lot of uh, people selling uh, what you call a snake oil i think uh, selling uh, false products so when you are speaking about life extension there are a lot of people thinking that you are trying to to fool them and that's one of the one of the problems so it's i think it's very important also to say okay there is no way at the moment to obtain life extension to obtain life extension you need more uh, more research not okay so what do you so think what, what sort of things do you think um people who want to get uh, involved in and uh, promoting the cause uh, could do in their own countries um, in countries perhaps less uh, where the ideas are less popular or less well known than the USA or um, other English speaking countries what do you think people could do um, to help the the ideas spread in their own countries or in, in pockets of society where um, it's not very well known yet yeah that's uh, that's a good question so the well to to spread the word of course and i think uh, in the european uh, societies uh, you know that we are uh, we have um, a more uh, liberal uh, point of view well liberal in the the american uh, uh, meaning at least and uh, so for me, one of the important things is to to explain that uh, a society where people are living uh, longer and healthier is a better society, and not a society uh, a worse society. And uh, one of the aspects is uh, that uh, when people are living longer but healthier, uh, the there are less cost, uh, the less there is uh, less violence. And uh, so, once again, uh, the, the society is going to be better. So, to what can, what is possible to do for the for the for the for the people who are not uh, active at the moment is to first to read information about it and then to 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 spread the world, to, to spread the word. Sorry, and. Uh, at the moment there is not a lot of information in other languages than English so to translate information to uh, yeah to have discussions with uh, with uh, other people in uh, in sorry I don't find the word uh, in uh, yeah to the people they are in contact with to sure. spread sure. the for these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, do, if people wanted to put on meetings, like little salons or, or whatnot, um, that seems like it's something you know, it's reasonably easy to do and it gets people together. Um, you've been putting on a few meetings uh, over the years, haven't you? How's that been going? Yeah, so we are we have been uh, organizing the the immortality institute conference it was just uh, no uh, one year ago i think and uh, also uh, a few conferences uh, in, uh, in in brussels and there will be a conference in ghent that's a city just uh, 50 miles uh, from uh, from brussels 
and uh, yeah, I think that uh, we begin to uh, convince a, a few people. But of course, also there there's there's the fact that uh, uh, technological progressions are going uh, very fast. So the the people, even if they are not uh, listening di directly to us, uh, they notice that uh, progress is concerning wave regeneration, uh, gene therapy. Uh, nanotechnologies are going very fast. Yeah, it's a pretty convincing yeah, argument. Um, a lot of people do realize that technology is moving ahead, but still people have um, a sort of bias against uh, regenerative medicine or, or the prospects of living past a certain age, like living past 80 or 90 beyond, you know, um, what people term as a natural in, engagement with the mortal world um i often see you know why would you want to do that all the population problems and um that's just greedy uh how do you um try to convince would you try and convince somebody if they sounded like they were heavily biased towards not living to um uh for a longer time or for a ripe old age yeah the the problem is the people when you Tell to the people, okay, uh, medical progress is going to make uh, you live longer and healthier. They only, there's, it's very difficult. They always understand, yeah, we are going to live longer, but in bad health. So you have really to explain and to explain again that uh, that's the two ways together. So it's uh, healthier and longer. And uh, well, you you can give explanation about uh, the, the the past uh, during the last uh, hundred years. The life expectancy uh, was rising with uh, 30, 40 years, and the people nowadays, when they are 70 years old, they are in better health than the people 100 years or, uh, ago when they were 60. But uh, once again, it's very difficult uh, to. Uh, to make the people understand that uh, longer and uh, and healthier uh, together. Mm. Mm. I, want, I want also to I want also to add something uh, else that's about uh, technological uh, progresses and technological progresses in general. Uh, they are also very dangerous aspects. Um, and uh, well, for example, this question about uh, concerning uh, artificial intelligence, singul singularity, and so on. I'm not one of the, well, I would say that there are some people in the H plus movement uh, saying uh, that, well, there are risks, but the, these risks uh, are small. I'm not uh, at all, I disagree with that. I think that there are very big risks uh, related to technological progresses, and we have to, uh, to speak about this also. I'm, I, I didn't uh, mention until now, but I'm also a member of the Association Française AFT, AFT uh, Technoprog. It's a French organization, and this uh, organization is a chapter of uh, the H plus movement. But we will, and we will probably organize a, a conference about uh, existential risks uh, in, 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 a, in a few months. And um, one of the things I think uh, it's that, uh, well, the, I I don't have the solution, of course, to uh, to be sure to avoid all the uh, risks related to technological progresses, but I'm quite sure that uh, a society where uh, human beings can live a lot longer and a lot uh, more resilient is the when you have this society, the risks are a little bit more less important because people, because people are stronger and, uh, and and healthier. Okay, of course it's not the solution, but it's still a small step in the good to, uh, direction. And also, a society where the life where life is longer is also a society where life is more precious, and a society where life mm -hmm. is more precious is also a society where the risks are less important. Hmm. Of, of self destruction, for example. So you did you did mention like the Humanity Plus movement, and also um, you uh, mentioned Nick Bostrom stuff. I think he's doing his part of the Future of Humanity Institute along with Anders Sandberg. 
um, and they work on uh, existential risk, yeah, so they're doing a good yeah. job there. As well as the Singularity Institute, they're all about um, trying to find a way to um, program provably, or at least as close to provably friendly artificial intelligence. Um, so that's it's good that there are some organisations out there focusing on the subject in terms of yeah. um, uh, and, sorry, getting people. Uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, and one thing also I want to to add. I'm uh, I'm also active uh, among other things uh, in the in the green movement. Oh, yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. well, there are a few uh, green, uh, well, not a few, there are green activists saying that uh, longer and healthier life is not so much a good thing because uh, of overpopulation. Uh, once again, I'll, I will come to this point in, uh, in Hong Kong. But uh, also, I'm uh, quite convinced that uh, a society where people are living a lot longer is also a society where people care more for the future and uh, so they care they care more for the the aspects of uh, uh, having a better environment for today for tomorrow and also for the for the years to come so just for this aspect also it's very important to have a longer and healthier life i think that's pretty important <laughs> I mean, people do tend to care about futures where they are going to be part of um and they don't really have the foresight, the the natural foresight to and and the natural inclination to care about things that are um, going to happen after they die, for instance. So I think having a longer life and having a more like a longer health span is going to motivate people to think um, in longer horizons and uh, think of longer term goals. Yeah, for sure. I, I I'm with you. There actually. Um, so, what do you think? What to you? What's the most exciting um, developments in longevity today? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I don't think I, I think that there are at least uh, four. Uh, no, three, three, four domains where we are, where, where we have uh, important uh, progressions. Uh, you have all aspects concerning rejuvenation, all aspects concerning uh, gene therapy, and all aspects concerning uh, nanotechnology. Uh, at the moment, I think that the progressions are the the, the best progressions are concerning uh, stem cells uh, therapies, but. Yeah, it's it, once again. It's uh, even there. It's not for two more. It's not for in a few months. Uh, maybe in a few years. It's uh, it's difficult to say. And I'm I try to. I'm not a scientist, so I try to follow uh, information uh, concerning all these uh, aspects. But uh, and I was in. Uh, I was in Cambridge uh, just a few weeks ago for the Sense5 uh, conference. Uh, yeah, so there are a lot of uh, promising uh, uh, field of research, but there is no one where I can say, okay, that this is for the day after tomorrow. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, it may not be the day after tomorrow, you're right. But, um, have you in in the five years that you've been actively promoting the ideas? Have you seen any atti attitude change in um, in the mainstream view of uh, scientific progress in at least uh, e extending health span or just um, improving health? Do you think there's been much of a an attitude in the mainstream sort of um, view of the approach to developing a healthy, so um, developing uh, good procedures to promote health in people, if not um, longevity. Difficult to say. I would say that, uh, well, uh, I, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Hmm. Because the difference between uh, now and five years ago is five years ago I was not interested in this topic, and now I'm very interested. So I'm following uh, very 
I am I'm really following all information about uh, this these topics. The well, what's certainly the new thing is there is uh, more information available about uh, these topics than five years ago. Certainly, uh, uh, concerning rejuvenation and gene therapy, the people understand more about this than five years ago because uh, because there is this progression and because uh, there is uh, more information. I spoke already about uh, this, uh, these two books, uh, French books. Uh, they, they were no... Um, you don't have a lot of books about uh, life extension uh, in French. So for this is uh, this is also uh, progressing, and at the at the European uh, level, there is uh, one uh, official uh, health care program at the European level, and one of the official goals of of this uh, this European uh, activities is to rise life exp life expectancy with two years. So that's really something I think that uh, you didn't see. That's the first first time I see this as an uh, official objective to rise like the life expectancy. Wow, wow, okay. it's interesting. Um, the m medical profession in general train uh, still sees um, aging and disease as separate processes. Um, I'm hoping that. You know, with at least with uh, advancements in how pe we understand the um, the genome and how we understand how the body works from the ground up, from you know the code of the body, that we'll we'll see um, we'll see aging um, as a, as a disease and instead of as a separate sort of natural process. I think that would be really interesting. Yes, sure. That's uh, at the moment most people see old age not as a disease. Well, actually, old age is not one disease. It's a lot of uh, disease uh, going, uh, and we die. Most of the the people now are dying of uh, disease related to old age. And if you can uh, convince people that uh, it's possible. To overcome this disease, of course, uh, it's uh, it's a big step, and it's uh, well, it's not for tomorrow, but uh, we begin to see it uh, for uh, a few people and even a few uh, serious uh, scientists, but not all of them. Still, some people are saying that um, playing with uh, these technologies to increase the lifespan is kind of like you know playing God. Like, you know, don't play God because otherwise one day that'll come and um, cause re really big problems or bite you in the ass. There's plenty of Hollywood movies which send, tend to depict this don't play God attitude. What are your thoughts? Yeah, for me, uh, my thought is very... Uh, uh, very well. There is no doubt about the fact that we are playing doubt. We are playing God since uh, that we are human beings. Uh, since that we uh, we invited, we used uh, fire for the first time. And uh, well, I I think it's important to remember that uh, even uh, the first people who were using um, written uh, information. Uh, some uh, philosophers were against it. Uh, they were thinking, uh, well, that's uh, already too much uh, an artificial way of being to use uh, written text. So we are playing, uh, we are playing God all the time. And uh, the the question concerning life extension is only: Do we want to live longer with technological progresses, progresses and with medical progresses or not? And uh, for me, the answer is yes. Uh, and uh, for me also, the answer is, uh, I can understand that there are people who don't want to live longer, but they are not obliged to live longer. So the people who don't want to use uh, new technologies to live longer, they, are, they, can, uh, decide it, uh, they can decide not to use it, but they don't have to oblige other people to, to die. So if you say no to technological, uh, to medical policies, 
you say no to te- to medical progresses for you, but also for the for other people. And we don't have this right to decide for other people. And you could almost say, well, it would be a little bit uh, exaggerated, but you can you could almost say that the people who don't want technological progresses are no not playing God, but uh, are deciding about the life and death of other people without asking them. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. Um, um, I, I think uh, it's interesting that different types of people seem to cotton on or um, be more interested in uh, technological progress in general than others. Uh, just from my own observations, I've noticed a lot of the people who come to the meetings that I put on in Melbourne or the conferences like the Singularity Summit Australia and the H Plus Australia have uh, come from an IT background. Um, but there are some philosophers and, and sociologists, and now I see some economists creeping in. Um, what uh, Have you noticed a trend in the types of people that, that seem to be open to these sorts of uh, things, like technological progress, or more specifically, regenerative medicine? Yes, sure, and that's no surprise. So you are, uh, you have more people, uh, of, yeah, active in, uh, yeah, technological uh, fields. But that's, I would say, that's quite logical. In uh, our organization, Hills, you have a lot of people active in uh, medical fields, uh, studying uh, for to to uh, to become a, a doctor. That's also quite logical. And uh, I noticed also that there are a lot of uh, people when they were young, they were interested in uh, science fiction. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, and uh, I think to have an open spirit, it's necessary when you are young to have this, uh, this access to a lot of uh, new ideas. And probably it's the other way, there are uh, people when they were young, they were only uh, reading or f- having access to information in uh, in uh, closed fields and not open uh, enough to uh, to new ideas. Uh, and so they are not. It's for these people. It's very uh, very difficult to imagine a, a very different world and a world where uh, old age. Uh, a world where uh, old age will be a disease only for a few, and also a world where uh, technological progress are going very fast. So, for people who were, yeah, when they were young, they were they had less contacts. Uh, how can I say that? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, what what you are living when you when you are young is important and when you have uh, more access to open information uh, when you are young it's easier uh, later to be open also yeah yeah I, that's interesting yeah because i guess i was interested in science fiction and and prehistory i was big on like a uh, ever all you know what happened around the time of the dinosaurs and and how life originated and all that. When I was a kid, I was, you know, the school expert on that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's a, an interesting thing. And maybe, maybe there's, maybe that played a big part in me. Um, also, I'm in IT. Uh, yeah. So, so, so people having sort of a general, um, people being able to think abstractly through the, through being um, impressed upon by many sort of fields of endeavor or being interested in a lot of different things gives people the sort of flexibility of mind I think sometimes that, that allows people to take in these things instead of just go off the status quo yeah that's that's yeah. very interesting well I'm certainly looking forward to to um, yeah, to hearing maybe, you speak maybe one thing I want to add for, for me it's it's like uh, almost a, a mystery that most people, and certainly since I'm uh, an activist and a green activist and a social activist, uh, certainly for po- people politically active, and who or, who say 
that they want to think on the long term, for me it's uh, difficult to understand why they don't see that the technological progressions will be, have a lot of uh, consequences. Uh, well, uh, we, we spoke about uh, life extension, we spoke a little bit about uh, existential risks, but uh, there is also, for example, the fact that uh, with, uh, do, you say, do you say in English, automati automatization, uh, robots and so on, uh, that uh, the working time uh, will be uh, probably in a few years really going, going down. Uh, and uh, that you have there also a lot of uh, political and philosophical questions. So for me, once again, it's almost, uh, it's not easy to understand why only a few people are thinking on the long term when they think about uh, technological progressions. Mm -hmm. uh, very often they will, uh, they will say, okay, there is this aspect dangerous, this aspect is positive, but it's only in a few years, not in, uh, not uh, thinking about the situation in 10, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Well, on the other mm -hmm. side, it's, uh, it's very uh, difficult to, uh, to have a long-term perspective because when you take a look at a perspective, uh, people trying to make, people who were trying to make perspectives uh, 30 years ago, in, um, in a lot of cases, they were totally wrong. Okay, but still. That's interesting. I mean, it, but we haven't lived, um, I mean, if you look at our evolutionary history, most of it's been um, in times of very slow change or hardly any change, at least in one life, lifetime. Um, you've had some, I guess, punctuated equilibrium or sharp changes, it, it, like in at points in history, but they're uh, it, historically, they've, they've more often been um, the exception rather than the norm. Uh, I don't think we're wired like um, to be able to cope with um, seeing the world around us change as fast as it does. Um, a lot of people just think tomorrow is going to be full of like gadgets, just like we have now, except a, a new model, like cameras with you know an extra few megapixels resolution in the future, or, or, or yeah. smartphones that, that are a little bit faster, or computers that are faster, yeah. or bigger yeah, yeah. TVs, or razor blades with more razors on them. But they don't see left field or, um, you know, tipping points in like a certain technological development having big impacts. They don't, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it becomes hard for people to think um, that technological progress will have such a massive impact except um, uh, bringing forth new um, sort of devices which are which is really just like overlaying or superimposing what we see as technology in the world today over the world of tomorrow um, but like you like you say I, I think there's going to be some very big impacts um, yeah, one one of them was the industrial revolution, revolution, uh, and I think that had a big impact, and it put a lot of people out of work. But people could upskill, couldn't they? They could they could move into new domains. I think um, the scary prospect for me um, is once AI gets good enough, then um, and it and it starts taking over the intellectual jobs, then there's going to be more and more types of people put out of work and um, the people who use their brains like what, what we normally think of as intelligent like you know maybe becoming a lawyer or something like that people often uh, be put out of work and maybe in the future um, there, there won't be enough jobs to go around <laughs> so yeah the social system um, will have to change if it's going to support everybody I agree yeah. with you that's yeah. one of the big questions and uh, well I'm uh... But that's another question than life extension, so maybe for another time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. All right, well, it's been great talking, and thanks so much for your time. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to your talk. I think it'll uh, be a, um, quite inspirational for me, seeing so I'm doing something sort of similar to what you're doing in Europe, except I'm doing it in an English-speaking country. I don't need to translate very much. <laughs> but I've got a lot of friends who... who um, could do some translating into their own own languages, like Chinese and Vietnamese. Uh, be interesting. 
Yeah, so um, thanks very much for the for the, uh, for the chat. Um, I'll put all this online and uh, look forward to meeting you in Hong Kong. Okay. You you stop it. You have, you stop it now. Or maybe we can uh, speak a little bit. Just just uh, I mean uh, informal. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I I can uh, stop it now, and we can yeah. speak informally.